and so it's the root of it's the foundation of our country everything we, is rooted in white supremacy but what do you mean by the foundation all of our laws, practices, policies, the ways that neighborhoods are divided, the ways that funding is divided, who gets housing, who gets jobs, who gets loans, all of that is rooted in white supremacy. Who gets arrested. Who gets arrested. The fact that black people didn't actually get incarcerated until after slavery ended and now we have mass incarceration in which people who are incarcerated still have to do work. And don't get or, that, or that black people could legitimately vote until 1964. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's that. And if you think about the folks that have been fighting the wildfires are all people who are incarcerated, the vast majority, none of whom are actually allowed to be firefighters after they leave right. incarceration because they have felonies on their record. So they're allowed to fight fires while they're incarcerated and not get paid for it, but they're not allowed to be firefighters after leaving incarceration. You speak a little. So, but you, you said earlier something to do with white su supremacy as the genesis of slavery and it goes back, you know, colonization and yeah right so the idea of colonialism is europeans being sanctioned and being granted the right to conquer lands of the west mm -hmm. which at the time were ha inhabited by indigenous folks mm -hmm. right and so this idea that because we are white therefore we can and therefore we should and therefore we're entitled to so colonialism this idea of explorers and venturing into new lands really is rooted in this idea that God has sanctioned us to not only explore the lands of the West, but to settle them, mm -hmm. conquer them, and kill anyone who's in our way. And who's unwilling to like adopt the religion right. that we say they should adopt. Right. And if you choose not to be to convert into our faith, which was Christianity, mm -hmm. in some, you know, um, some sect of Christianity, then you die. And so and then move that to uh, slavery and in the United States and then government. Well, in order for lands to be worked, right? The the South was fertile ground was fertile ground for cotton, and people who owned land in the South wanted to be able to profit off the lands without actually having to pay much money to do so, right? So slavery economically is a very beneficial institution. And that's how you connect and it you to have... white supremacy and capitalism. Correct, right? Because okay? enslavement, economically speaking, is maximum profit or, you know, maximum product with very little overhead, mm -hmm. right? Because the most you had to do with your slaves was just feed them, barely, clothe them, but you didn't pay them. And so whatever you made off the land was almost overhead, quote unquote, overhead free. Yeah, which was which happened after the Jamestown colony and Tate's Rebellion when it when we had black, indigenous, and white folks who were indentured servants who could mm -hmm. like work to get themselves out of servitude. But then there was a rebellion of those folks who were fighting against people who would colonize to be able to have their own land, right? To like work their own space. And what they decided to do was divide poor white folks and black folks and indigenous folks mm -hmm. by saying, okay. We're going to say that all of the poor white folks who are indentured servants can, have some can now help have land. their own land, and all of the black folks are now slaves. And so that is how you see the, the very start of pitting black folks against poor white folks, right? And then we see that till today, where you still have rural poor white folks who believe that they are poor and that they don't have access to resources because, because of, of affirmative folks, action, because right. of black folks, because, because of welfare, because of slavery, because of not slavery, because of welfare. immigration, yeah. because you have people coming into the country who are quote unquote taking their jobs. And so you see that at the very foundation of our country within the first 13 colonies. Right. So n none of these notions and these narratives that we think are true, came, like they came from somewhere, right? And they came from the very beginnings of this country, mm -hmm. which was called the colonization, of the America, genocide of the genocide of, of, of indigenous people and the enslavement of Western Africans um, to to maximize profit of the Americas, which then helped us win the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. right? Like we were able to finance the Revolutionary War and win was because of the money that was earned from the cotton industry of the South, right? So literally our the, the freedom of this country that we've been taught, right? The Revolutionary War was won on the backs of slaves. Mm -hmm. And then you see, even with that, the ways in which white landowners were taught that they actually get more if they sexually assault their female slaves, mm -hmm. right? Because then they have more children who are who are, will never actually be their heirs, 
because of the one drop rule right. and then the ways in which <clears throat> black men are seen as being aggressive and violent towards white women and, and, so black black women. Right. and then the black women, women. And then to, to move yeah. this issue about racism today you said something earlier about when you talk about race you got to think about context you'll say something about race and transportation and education oh that the way that we can start any conversation about why it's important to talk about that everything is about racism and race is that anytime you have a conversation about any kind of service or really anything if you're not leading with race then you're not having the full conversation because when you talk if you think about transportation most people will say like buses or planes or cars or what have you but if you say race and transportation folks will think about like a train ending earlier in a certain zip code mm -hmm. or a certain neighborhood or bad roads or bad roads like potholes or right. you'll have a highway being built through a predominantly black neighborhood or you'll see that bus depots happen to be in black and brown neighborhoods. So all of that environmental smog and, and pollution is happening in those neighborhoods versus white neighborhoods. Right. And so we're not really having a full conversation about anything if we're not talking about race when we're having the conversation. So if you want to have a, a substantive conversation, you've got to say race and mm -hmm. right. a context. Right. Yeah. So this is the notion that has been coined the term intersectionality, right? So when we talk about, when we're talking about race, we have to talk about, or we talk, when we're talking about any social construct, we can't talk, talk about it monolithically. We have to talk about the ways in which that social construct, specifically race, in, in how each racial category interacts with a, with a certain system or sector or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Because the actual full conversation can't be experienced if we're not talking about the ways each individual race experiences a certain system or sector or rather it's gender right yeah. or whether it's you know immigration status or whatever but talking about black people or white people or women is monolithic and you don't you 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 fail to really understand the full spectrum of a conversation because not all women experience their world the same way. Yeah. And so, so let me, um, sorry, I'll just close it by, by saying this. Remember you said something about stereotype about how people react to situations when a white person, a white client reacts to something and a black client. You want to expand on that a little bit? I thought that was <laughs> very interesting. Mom, it's really funny. Um, that like if a white client comes in and is, is loud or angry that there's this like, mothering way that people show up where they try to like just be like what do you need and try to soothe the person where or if a like black or brown person comes in and is angry then we automatically call security everybody is like automatically on guard there's automatically this belief that the person is going to become physically violent and aggressive and so we need to de-escalate using using force. actually force and escalation yeah. tactics versus de-escalating and actually like talking to the person like they're a person and recognizing attending that to there's needs. yeah Amazing, amazing. All right, good. This this brings to an end of uh, part one. Well, part two will come soon. Thank you, guys. Very inspirational.